So first of all, we uh, are dealing with uh, a phonetic writing, is it it? Yeah, so uh, this is one of the results of the decipherment because before deciphering the writing system we did not have any information about that. Actually two years ago I was still thinking that it was a mixed writing system. Before talking more about that I should first say that there are two big types of writing system in the world. Phonetic and inside phonetic system you have syllabic and alphabetic we are using alphabetic system with the alphabet on one side phonetic and on the other side logogrammatic or ideogrammatic so it's never like either just phonetic or i or just logogrammatic most of the time it's a mixed of both of them for example think about the latin alphabet or writing system how do you want to write for example 1000 are you going to write one Thousand with letter or with logogram signs. So we are still using logograms, for example, to write the numbers. In this case, I was thinking two years ago that it was a mixed system because uh, most of the system, they are mixed. But I realized that it is a pure phonetic writing system. And so I just want to be clear, that's not the most ancient writing system in the world. It's one of the most ancient with the protocuniform in Mesopotamia, but it is the most ancient, completely phonetic system in the world. And that's a big information. To be uh, even more clear, uh, we have to say that is a, is absolutely not a cuneiform. It's no, alors, so, no, no, that's not cuneiform. Cuneiform writing system is a system which was developed in Mesopotamia. Here we are talking with the original system developed in the Iranian plateau. It was known before, it is known since the beginning of the 20th century through excavation in Susa. But as it was never deciphered, like the cuneiform, it was not very well known, not very famous. And all the time when I'm reading stuff about Near East, Near Eastern civilization, they are all the time talking just about Mesopotamia, because this is just the information that most of the people have. But uh, actually, this is not at all representative of all the reality. And actually, they are all the time skipping the Iranian information. And I'm not here to say Mesopotamia is not important. No, I'm saying Mesopotamia is important. But besides Mesopotamia, there is Iran and there are very nice and interesting information coming from Iran and it gives us now a more representative view of the history of the ancient Near East which is a, which is a very uh, important area for world history. The press releases uh, tell us that uh, uh, linear Elamite yeah. uh, is uh, an isolated uh, writing now. So, be careful, once again, don't make confusion between writing and language. Elamite language is an isolate language. Here, if we are talking of the writing system, that's something else. That's the writing system used to record this language, which is an isolate. But we cannot, from a scientific point of view, it, uh, it has no point of saying of a writing system that it is an isolate. No, that's the language which is recorded with linear lamite. But this language was also recorded with cuneiform inscription. Uh, it could be either transcribed. That's why that's very difficult for us to think about that, because we are used to one language, one writing system. No, <laughs> that's, not, uh, that's not as simple as that. One language, for example, can be uh, recorded with different writing system. Think of, for example, the Turkish language. Yes, of course. Since the, uh, up to the 1920s, it was written with the Arabic alphabet. With the reform of Atatürk, he decided to use the Latin alphabet. And now we are on the edge of the, another change. Maybe. Ah, but I don't know. I think, they, I, I think they don't want to change the, the writing system. But the point is the same language, but recorded with two different writing systems. This is exa exactly the same situation we are dealing with in the third millennium with Elamite language. It was recorded first with this uh, original linear Elamite writing system, but also with the uh, Mesopotamian cuneiform writing system. So what we did not uh, understand or completely understand was uh, the uh, ancient writing system 
of uh, the Elamite language. Y yes, yes, because exactly because before we could read and understand the Elamite language through the cuneiform inscriptions. So in the conference I gave today, I said that why and how we could decipher the, uh, this ancient writing system because we had the previous knowledge of the language which was recorded. Okay, and now today we can read the in Elamite language inscript inscriptions written with the original ancient Iranian writing system. It's true that you applied the good uh, old way of, uh, uh, of deciphering that is the champignon, ah, yeah. but not uh, uh, with uh, multi-language inscription, no, but multi-writing. Yeah, big multi-graphic. Multi uh, no, I can say that is, it is the good way because I reached the decipherment, but you know, I'm working on this stuff since 2006. And I, today I just showed, I just presented what worked. I did not show all the stuff which did not work. Okay. So today it's very easy to say that that is the good uh, approach. Yeah, I know I can say that's a good approach, but uh, I tried the statistic and all this uh, stuff and actually was giving nothing. And so, yes, the all good approach. Actually, before the decipherment, we were not sure this linear Elamite writing inscription. We were not sure that they were recording Elamite language inscriptions. Could be. A, yeah, it else. could be another language. So uh, when uh, you started to decipher this uh, writing, writing and then understanding that language. Um, have you found something different uh, uh, in what was written, for instance, uh, in cuneiform uh, or not? So, so that's a very interesting question because if we are dealing with the Elamite language, which is an isolate, and so as it is an isolate, it's we have still some uh, a bit like Etruscan, you know, uh, Etruscan okay. is still bit about. We still have some problem problems to understand it because we cannot compare it with other languages. Still, they started to record the Elamite language first with their own writing system, and then, let's say, at the uh, late third millennium, around 2000 BC, they started to use. I'm not going to enter why the historical reasons why they started, but they started to use the Mesopotamian cuneiform writing system. And the Mesopotamian cune uh, cuneiform writing system is not well adapted to this language. So there were still a lot of ambiguities and uh, very dark areas in our understanding of the Elamite language. Now we can read and understand the original writing which was developed for their own language and actually we really increased in our knowledge of the language, Elamite language. Generally, what uh, these uh, inscriptions tell us? Hello, usually. So we are talking of, let's say, 40 inscriptions and we can divide them in eight different corpora. Well, I'm not going to tell you uh, the eight, okay. uh, that will be a bit boring. But let's say that two of them, two of these corpora, we are dealing with royal inscriptions. One of them is the corpus of inscription of Puzur Shushinak, the, that's the name of the king. Uh, he was ruling in Susa uh, in the 22nd century BC. And what is he saying? I am Puzo in Shushinak, I am the boss in Susa, I am the ruler in all this territory, and I am the son of my father, and his name is Simpishruk. Well, uh, that's more or less. And another corpus, it's called the Gunagi Corpus, on very nice uh, silver vessel, and more or less, once again, these are royal inscriptions dealing with I am Palaishan, uh, I did that for this ruler, I gave this silver vessel to the god Napirisha, I deposited this vessel in the temple, and so on and so on. So uh, that's quite repetitive inscription, but thanks to the repetition, actually, we could really well understand the structure of the inscription. We have to thank them for their re repetitive. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, that was uh, nice of them, yeah. So uh, the last thing in general that I ask to you is, uh, what this, uh, this study can open in the future of the uh, study of the, I would say, Middle East and the... Mm -hmm. yeah. So there is a direct uh, consequence of this stuff because uh, I told you that the linear Lama writing, which now I am calling the Proto-Iranian writing stage three, because I think that it is the direct descendant of 
what previously we were calling protoelamide tablets. So, for example, if you were asking me the question two years ago, I would have told you, hey, in Iran, the situation is incredible. We have two undeciphered rating systems, protoelamide around 3000 BC, linealamide around 2000 BC. Now, I got to the point that these are not two rating systems. They are just the same. This is the same but at two different times, two different periods. And now that we deciphered the most recent stage of this rating system, I think we can follow like an highway, the road to the most ancient stage of this rating system, the proto-Elamite tablets or the proto-Iranian rating stage one. A last thing that is more last than the, the, okay, okay. the preceding. Uh, who's the, the relative of this, uh, of this uh, language and, and on of this writing not because of the writing has gone Alors, the, rela the relatives you know as i told you elamite as far as we know is a is a light language so uh, some people are uh, this is more linguistic work i'm not dealing i'm uh, with that but some people tried to make connection with the dravidian languages in which are right now in southern india la like brawi or tamul some people tried to make connection with sumerian which is also an isolate with hungarian well that's for now that's an isolate language about the writing system uh, if we are dealing with this proto-Iranian writing system, you know, if we are dealing, if we are talking of the, let's say, third millennium or around 3000 BC, at that time, there was only one other writing system in the world, the cuneiform. So you, uh, and actually they are independent cuneiform and the proto-Iranian writing, they are contemporary, but independent. So also it's, uh, it's the beginning of the writing actually, huh, in the world. Huh?